Parliament Chairman Salva Kirmari meets the SPLM Secretariat of the incoming and outgoing ministers next week. Interior Minister returns to Juba after an official tour to Western Bargazal State. And finally, a bridge along Juba Bore Road collapses. Good evening, welcome to SSTV News. I am Kiran with the news in detail. President Salva Kir Mahdi today held talks with delegations from the family of the Catholic Church of Unity State and from the SPLM Secretariat led by the party's Deputy Secretary General, Dr. Ann Ito. The President of the Republic, General Salva Kirmayadid, met today at the State House with a delegation from the family of the Catholic Church of Unity State led by Reverend Father Peter Otho David. The meeting held in the presence of the National Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Nadia Arob Dudi, discussed the challenges facing the lady in building a church in Bentiu. In a statement to the press, Father David said, President Kir pledged to look into the project. We have been working on the building of the church, and we have been working on the president of the church, who has been working on the church, so that they can build the church in the city of Bentiu. President Kiel also met a delegation from the SPLM Secretariat headed by the party's Deputy Secretary General, Dr. Ann Ito. Dr. Ann briefed the President on the ongoing preparations for holding a series of important meetings of the party in the coming weeks. Dr. Ann revealed to the press after the meeting that the chairman of the SPLM party has directed the Secretariat to organize a meeting between him with the outgoing and incoming ministers. He also directed us to prepare uh, meetings for him with the incoming uh, ministers and the outgoing ministers. Of course, this is very, very important because whether they're incoming or outgoing, these are cadres of the SPLM and each one deserves a message from the party as how their lives would go on, either as members of the new cabinet or as SPLM leaders in the parliament or outside. So uh, these are very, very important. She announced that the meetings between the SPLM chairman and the secretariat, including the outgoing and incoming ministers, as well as the caucus, will be held next week. The head of the state was also briefed by the chairperson of the World Disabled Widows and Orphans Commission, Deng Dao Deng, on the progress and challenges facing the commission. On the progress of the work of the National Commission for World Disabled Widows and Orphans, and particularly on the recent developments, uh, the action plans, the programs of the low cost houses, and also of the Matai's bills, and also of general issues that are affecting the war widows, war orphans, and war disabled. Dao Deng appreciated President Kiel for being supportive to the commission and to the war disabled in the 79 counties of South Sudan. Reporting for SSTV News in Juba, I'm Rejoice Tio Samson. Vice President James Wani Iga today received messages of congratulations from the Deputy Speaker of the National Parliament, Fatuma Nyawang, the Governor of Eastern Equatorial State, Louis Lobong Lojore, and a delegation from Kogi Community and Chiefs from Southern Barry in Juba County. More congratulatory messages are still pouring to the office of the newly appointed Vice President James Wani Iga for his appointment as the Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan. The Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Fatma Nyawang, on behalf of the Assembly members and on her own behalf, congratulated the Vice President James Wani Iga for his new assignment. On behalf of the, the MP and the whole Parliament, that we congratulate him uh, with the uh, with appointment with as a vice president. And I would tell you, you know, a right man in a right place. Because we are eager, and then as Zumala, we are sure I know he's a very open person which will interact with anybody in this uh, building and who are as a vice president. Um, is a very good uh, 
Honorable Fatma described James Wani Iga as a personality who struggled with the vision without discrimination. The governor of Eastern Equatoria State, Louis Lobong Lojore, on behalf of the government and the people of Eastern Equatoria State, congratulated James Wani Iga for his assignment and briefed him on the general situation in his state. Okay. I, I came from Eastern Equatoria this morning in order to come and congratulate uh, Comrade James Maniga, the Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan. The National Legislative Assembly in its session today, chaired by the Deputy Speaker Daniel Aweta Court, after a long discussion, passed the proposal for South Sudan membership to the African Development Bank. Earlier, the resolution and observations were presented to the August House by the Chairperson of the Assembly's Specialized Committee for Development, Finance and Economy, Paul Lugale Jumi. The National Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Dr. Martin Elia Lumoro, met in his office at the General Secretariat with the head of the Arab League in South Sudan, Ambassador Mohamed Munsif Amin Morad. The meeting discussed a number of issues of joint concern between the two sides. The National Minister of Interior and Wildlife Conservation, Lieutenant General Aliu Ayain Aliu, is back to Juba after a tour of Western Baragazal State. While in the state capital, Wau Aliu presided over the first extraordinary police leadership conference for transformation. The National Minister of Interior and Wildlife Conservation, Lieutenant General Aliu Ayen Aliu, is back to Juba after an official tour to Western Baragazal. While in the state capital, Wau, Minister Aliu presided over the first extraordinary police leadership conference for transformation. In a press conference held in Juba upon his arrival, Lieutenant General Aliu said the conference adopted, among other four important principles comprising of respect for human rights, non-corruption practices, concern for women and children welfare, as well as accountability. To announce to all the criminals in Juba in particular and, and elsewhere that the battle against crime has started today. And I appeal to the general public to assist the law enforcement agencies in this war against crime. The battle against crime and insecurity cannot be won only cannot be won only by appointment of ministers. I was appointed a minister, but to be able to be effective, I had to go to this conference, to join hands by this. I give them orders that any criminal in uniform must be destroyed in situ. He said community policing is important to create relations between communities and the police. The policy of community policing, opposed to what is now called community police, we have adopted community policing. This community policing uh, shall give the public and the citizens at large their constitutional right to be partners in security keeping. So our people have a right to provide security in conjunction with the, with the security sector. Together they can provide security to the people of South Sudan. For SSTV News, I am Eric Steven. 
The Ministry of Telecommunication and Postal Services has directed the telecommunication companies operating in the country to improve their services across the country. With the needs of communication bridging and connection of the people of South Sudan nation with their brothers and sisters in other nations, the Ministry of Telecommunication and Postal Service has directed the telecommunication companies operating in the country to improve their services across the country. <laughs> The directives were made by the National Minister of Telecommunication and Postal Service, Rebecca Joshua Okwashi, during the inauguration of the Jamtel Customer Care Office at Gudele Richardson area in Juba. Rebecca said expansion of the customer care office will increase services delivered and connect the country to the rest of the world. For SSTV, Pop Johnson Matura K reporting. The Minister of National Education, John Gayo, and his deputy, Bol McQueen, acquainted themselves with the SPLM General Secretariat Office. The two sides discussed issues on how to improve the educational portfolio system and implement the policy of taking towns to the people as the vision of the SPLM, initiated by the late hero, Dr. John Garang. Of national education, John Gayo and his deputy Bol McQueen acquainted themselves with the SPLM General Secretariat Office. The two discussed issues on how to improve educational portfolio system and implement the policy of taking towns to the people as the vision of the SPLM initiated by the late hero Dr. John Garang. Antipas Nyok Secretary for Political Affairs and Mobilization, on behalf of the General Secretariat, warmly welcomed the Minister and his deputy to the SPLM General Secretariat and promised to work together with the Minister as the SPLM members in order to deliver services to the South Sudanese. How best uh, they could go about the building because education generally is facing a lot of difficulties all over the country. So they felt that they should not uh, move alone uh, on this big task. They think that they can move collectively with the rest of uh, the SPLM uh, unit and organs and also the other institutions, uh, public institutions of the uh, government of uh, Republic of South Sudan uh, so that whenever they, they succeeded, they, they succeeded, we succeeded as a team. In a press statement after, the deputy Paul McQueen thanked the president and the SPLM general secretariat for the trust bestowed upon him and his colleague for appointing them in the Ministry of Education. To state to the SPLM that because of the trust and confidence given to us by the president of the republic and the general secretariat will not betray the president's trust. I will not betray the SPLM, I will not betray the people of South Sudan, and will not betray the orphans and widows of the liberation war. He said they will do their best to deliver services in education sector to the people. 
Meanwhile, Minister of National Education John Gayo said his ministry is in process of carrying out assessment in educational sector in order to come up with effective policies that will be implemented to improve the educational system in the country within the specific period of time given to them by the president. Guys Philip has got very important uh, ideas that have been already compiled into uh, a written form on the education in South Sudan from the Islam perspective. We feel this is a very important thing one, a very important undertaking. We are very serious that uh, we will be listening to the SPLM leadership and the Secretariat. And out of this, with whatever we get in the ministry, we can then start uh, coming up with a plan of action within the specified period that the President has given, which is three months. Reporting for SSTV News in Juba, I'm Gore Anthony. The National Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Nadia Arab Dudi, was briefed on the support and assistance UNICEF and other development partners render to youth development projects in the country by the UNICEF Deputy Country Director, Pelusi Ntambirweki, in her office today. The UNICEF officials said projects include education and construction of youth-friendly centers in Upper Nile, Jongole and Eastern Equatoria State. Duty assured of her ministry's commitment and cooperation with the development partners to promote youth activities in the country. The Minister of Environment, Abdullah Deng Nial, today in his office met with a delegation from the Chinese telecommunication company ZTE. The meeting discussed matters related to environmental conservation and management. The company pledges to move the new nation towards the era of using solar and wind energy to mitigate environmental hazards caused by the biofuels like charcoal and firewood. South Sudan is on the move towards technological advancement. The country is receiving a number of investment companies from all the campus directions of the globe almost every year. Today, a delegation from the Chinese Telecommunication Corporation, ZTE, in their meeting with the Minister of Environment, unveiled a plan to introduce the country into the new era of solar and wind energy as an alternative measure to reduce environmental hazards. In the meeting, the Minister of Environment, Abdallah Dengnyal, applauded the Chinese delegation for the initiative, saying the nation will benefit from it. Uh, they are using this what connects us as the Ministry of uh, Environment, connects us with this uh, huge company, is that they uh, encourage using solar energy and wind energy, which doesn't affect the environment, which help in keeping our environment clean and healthy. This is why uh, we discuss with them this area and how to cooperate and coordinate in this area. And they promise that they will give us uh, a report about the environment situation after using all these uh, energies, uh, which is uh, solar and wind, in collaboration with the Ministry of Telecommunications. Meanwhile, the director for ZTE, Dennis Ye, said his company is not only focused on telecom business, but also promote environmental conservation. He added that the company will, on the other way, create job opportunities to the locals. Global leading telecom equipment vendors in the world. And also, we are here more than five years, uh, and we contribute more effect for the new nations. Uh, we cooperate with the government to help the new nation to boom out. We already signed some contracts about the telecom sector and national digital TV sector. We are not only looking for the business opportunity, but we also do a lot of job about the social responsibility. 
we have a big team here, and we have local staff. So uh, through the working course, we can transfer the telecom knowledge and working skill to the local people. For SSTV News, Eddie Steven reporting. The security advisor in the National Minister of Interior, Wildlife and Conservation, Kamiz Abdel Latif, has called on the community of Lake State to promote spirit of unity for the sake of development. Abdel Latif made the call in a get-together party organized by the state community residents in Juba in honor of their community member, Bol Makwing, who has been appointed as the Deputy Minister of Education, Science and Technology in the recent government reshuffle. National Minister of Interior, Wildlife and Conservation, Kamis Abdel Latif, calls on the community of Lake State to promote spirit of unity for the sake of development. Abdel Latif made the calls in a get together party organized by the state community resident in Juba in honor of their community member, Bol McQueen, who has been appointed as the Deputy Minister of Education and Technology in the recent government reshuffle. Abdel Latif, on behalf of the community and on his own behalf, advised the Deputy Minister Ball to work as a team with his colleagues in the Ministry for Improvement of Education Sector in the country. Uh, I'm a Dawa, Abna, Mulayat, Baharazal Kubra, the Kriman, the Ibnana, Wakuna, Sadigna, Ball Makweng. بمناسبة تعيينه كنائبا لوزير التعليم. احنا مبسوطين لانه هو رجل وطني رجل قوي يهمه مستقبل جهاز البلد يعني. لذلك احنا بنشكر السيد فريق اول سال فكير ميادي رئيس الجمهوريه للثقه الكبير للدولة ابننا يعني. فاحنا الليله محتفلين while the chairperson of Greater Bahar El Ghazal community in Juba, Elder Ambrose Ring Thick, called on Ball to discharge his duty responsibly to fulfill the expectation of the citizens. They are in a vacuum. They are not functioning. They are not working. And most of our students in these universities are at night bewildered, not knowing what to do and where to go. Oh. It's a challenge. And uh, since the president has accorded you the confidence, the two of you is a teamwork. The newly appointed Deputy Minister of Education, Science and Technology appreciated the community for the honor and hospitality, calling on the community to support him as he takes his new responsibility. I will never betray Wali Shab University Sudan, wa Muntaq al Bahirat, leti ana jid mina. Ana kulo bi atram al Mustawayadil. Wana mungkin kaman nagulino niaban aileti benesker arrest al Jamhuria. For SSTV News, I'm Gore Anthony. The newly appointed Cabinet of Eastern Equatorial State and the advisors in the office of the Governor took oath of office yesterday in the state capital to read. Eastern Equatorial State and the advisors in the office of the Governor took oath of office yesterday in the state capital to read. Speaking during the ceremony, the Governor of the state, Louis Lobong Lojore, called on the ministers to work in coordination with their counterpart national ministries and the county's commissioners for service delivery to the citizens. Ministers, advisors. As the ministers, you must have a part line. They are the Mayoral Ministry of Juba, my commissioners of the counties, of all the counties, and also particularly your or the county where you come from. The 
county you come from, the rest of the county is for delivery of the services. Governor Lobong also urged the cabinet to submit their work plans period of two weeks for implementation by the councils. He called on the new cabinet to work for peace and development of the state and the country at large. Catholic Church in South Sudan and Sudan is trying to find a way of promoting peace between the two Sudans. Catholic bishops of South Sudan and Sudan have currently gathered in Khartoum for a plenary meeting which runs till 4th of September 2013. Sudan is holding its plenary meeting in Khartoum under the chairmanship of Gabriel Cardinal Zubair Wako. The plenary meeting is to find a way of promoting peace between the two Sudans and discuss the future of the Catholic Church in the two Sudans in the aftermath of the South Sudan independence. The meeting is the first since South Sudan became independent. The bishops from South Sudan participating in the meeting are Bishop Er Kulano Ladutombe, Bishop of Ye and Vice President of the Conference, Bishop Rodolf Deng Majak, Bishop of Wau, Bishop Vincent Majok Nyiker, retired Bishop of Malakal, Bishop Paride Taban, retired Bishop of Torit, and Bishop Santo Lakupio, Auxiliary Bishop of Juba. Other participants in the meeting are Apostolic Administrators, Monsignor Dr. Rocco Taban from Malakal, Monsignor Thomas Oliha from Torit, and Reverend Father Colombo from the Diocese of Rumbek. Oyet Patrick, SSTV News. A bridge about 35 kilometers along Juba Bor Road collapsed yesterday when a lorry carrying heavy loads of 50 tons of cement and other items was crossing the bridge taking goods from Juba to Bor in Jongole State. A bridge about 35 kilometers along Juba Bor Road collapsed yesterday when a lorry carrying heavy loads of 50 tons of cement and other items was crossing the bridge. The Under Secretary of the Directorate of Roads and Bridges, Engineer Gabriel Makur, inspected the broken bridge and directed the heavy vehicles will not be used until it is referred. He said the Ministry will mobilize resources for the constructions and maintenance of the bridge. We will need to bring all the way a belly bridge, which is 30 meters. And if you want to do the diversion, you need to lay down about three or four lines of 1,200 diameter culvert. Uh, the intervention will also require some finances so that you can mobilize a contractor to come and do the job within a minimum period so that you can allow the traffic to flow back again to, to board. 
Otherwise, with the rains that are coming, this stream cannot be crossed by heavy uh, weight uh, vehicles that are carrying uh, goods to, to board. Uh, so it is a concern of the ministry uh, to come here today as we learn of it uh, tonight. I came here to come and crack our mind uh, the best uh, way we can we can be able to, to connect people from Juba to Bob. Saying most of the bridges require urgent attention by the concerned authority to ensure safe movement of people and goods. Reporting for SSTV News, I'm Emmanuel Malwal. That's all we have for you today. Wishing all the best for the week. SSTV, truly African.